So I, I would like to introduce Heather Michael Gard from Arlington Strategies. Um, this whole program has come about uh, from a, a past session that we had where people were really having trouble hiring and finding people to, um, to be a good fit with their business post COVID. And this conversation led to this session this morning. And I am not the expert in the room, but I'm gonna hand it to the one who is. So everyone, please welcome Heather Michaelgard. Hi. Hi, Stephen. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Heather Michael Gard, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at Arlington Strategy. We're located right on Lee Highway, so not too far from Columbia Pike. And yeah, Stephen approached me and said, um, you know, one pain point that businesses have been having is finding the right people, finding their people. Um, and whether that's for staff and employment or even just new customers, the right customers. So we thought, you know, one thing that's been very big um, and relevant is values and transparency in marketing and branding in your business. So Today, what we're going to talk about is how to market your values to attract your people, to attract the people that you want to either do business with or to have work with you in your business. And I would love to just know who here has values already established for their brand. I know Columbia Pike does. Um, Steven. Amanda, I don't see anyone. I don't see the chat. Is there anyone else? Um, no. Okay. There is a raise your hand function um, in either your participants or your chat window, I believe, everybody. So if, if she does a poll and you just want to raise your hand or just type yes, no in the chat, feel free. That would be great. So what we're going to talk about today is why should your business have values? If you don't have them, we're going to talk about why they're important. We're gonna talk about how to define your business values if you don't have them, and or maybe you have them, but you've created them years ago and, and it might be time to do a refresh. We're gonna talk about how to market your values and who your values will attract. And next we'll talk about once you have your val values, what do you do with them? A lot of people just print them up, put them on the wall and leave them there. But there's other ways you can incorporate them into your marketing, into your branding to attract your people. And then we're going to talk about why it's important to support those who share your values. Um, and really, we'd love for this to be very conversational. So if you at any point have a question, please, like Amanda said, raise your hand, drop a comment in the chat. Um, stop me at any point. This is a small group. Um, we really want to make this a dialogue. So if you or even if you have a thought about something, please speak up, raise your hand. Um, we'd love to hear what you have to say. So why, to, why would you market your values? A recent Cone study said that 87% of people purchase a product based on the brand's values. And, you know, I think we've seen it now more than ever over just the last year. People want transparency. People want um, honesty. People are looking to store owners, restaurant owners. What do they believe in? What do they stand for? And when those businesses are willing to stand up and say what they stand for, more people are willing to support them. <clears throat> so values versus value proposition. There is a difference. So a value is a person's principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. Um, and, you know, let's extend that even to the business. So what makes you unique? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? What are you very passionate about? That is your value. Why did you start this business? Why did you create your name, your mission? Um, making a list of those is going to help you identify those values. Your value proposition is what makes you unique. What makes you stand out against your competition, against other businesses? Why should someone choose your business over another? So again, why should your business have values, um, especially these younger generations, the millennials and Zoomers, they're value shoppers. 
you, they're not as interested in your product as they are interested in who's behind that product. They want to know that they're supporting a brand or a business that is passionate, that has a mission, that isn't just doing this to make more money. They want to support someone who really believes in what they're doing and is wanting to make a change. So how to define your business values. If you do not have a set of values, now is the time to create them. This can be on a piece of paper, pull up a Google Doc, but make a list of what is really important to you. What do you value as a person? What do you value as a leader? Is it honesty? Is it transparency? Is it leadership? Is it, um, do you want to change the environment somehow? Do you want to make a difference in, in other people's lives? Like, what do you really value? Another way to do this is after that, have a focus group. Sometimes it's really helpful to bring people who aren't in your inner circle, who are on the outside looking in and say to them, like, looking at my business, looking at me, knowing me as a business owner, knowing me as a leader, what do you think my values are? What have you seen in me and how I operate and how I lead and how I talk to my employees? Getting that outside view can be so helpful and they may see things that you didn't realize or didn't see yourself. Um, sometimes because we're humble and we, we may not see some of this, but other people can be like, no, I see this all the time. You do X, Y, and Z. So having that focus group is really, really helpful. Heather, I don't think your slide advanced. We're still on one. Oh, I'm sorry. You're still on the first slide. There we go. Now we go. Okay. We're on two. Thank you. Thank you. And Amanda, I also don't see um, the chat. So stop me at any point. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> the, the last thing I just want to mention here is to involve your staff. You want cheerleaders within your business, within your company. So ask people, how do they see your values? How do they see the company's values? And ask them if they believe that you are living them. Do they believe that you are interpreting them in your everyday business, in um, how you deal with clients, how you deal with customers? Um, involving your staff also gets them excited and it gets them to believe. And that's just many more people that can go out and spread your message. So some sample values, um, some of these you guys might recognize. Uh, the first one is service. So this is one of our values from Arlington Strategies. We are dedicated to our clients and community first. So we believe in providing the service that helps our clients, it helps our community. And we try and do that in every day and all the things that we do, our proposals, whether we work with someone or not, are we living up to this value of service? Another example is from CPRO, which is inclusiveness. We strive to make Columbia Pike a place for all people, one that people of all walks of life can enjoy and or call home. I love that value. It is so relevant right now and it is so important. Um, so having that on the website, having that in the marketing, letting your staff know that this is what we believe, that just helps spread the message of inclusiveness within this organization. The other one was integrity. We do the right thing, period. And now I am completely blanking on which brand that was. But the other thing you want to say to yourself is, is that true? Like, are we doing the right thing every time? And can we go back and back that up? And we're going to talk more about when perhaps you aren't meeting your values or if there was an, a, a situation that someone might question that. Um, so we'll talk about that soon. Did you have something, Amanda? I'm good. Okay. So you've created a list of values. You're proud of them. You believe in them. Now what? So first and foremost, you want to make sure that everyone on your team knows what they are and that they believe in them too. I think it's really important that those that are on your team share in your values. And we'll talk more about that also. Next is you need to tell the world, tell the public, put it on your website, put it in your lobby, put it up on the wall, let people know what you believe in. That is the part of transparency, honesty, and really standing behind your beliefs, your values. 
So uh, just a couple more brands that I wanted to talk about that are living their values that are, that have values, um, front and center. The first one was sweet greens. Um, their core values guide their actions. Um, and what they said was our core values guide our actions. We aim to empower our customers, team members, and partners to be a positive force on the food system. So they really believe that they're going to change the way the food system operates, sustainability, our environment. And they've brought in not just, you know, the business owners or that the executives, but their team members, their partners, their customers, everybody knows this and everyone's involved linking arms, working on this one value together. Mom's Organic Market also has them right up front on their website. Um, the thing I loved about their values was they were real, they were bold, yet they were also really simple. They weren't, um, you know, it wasn't a lot of fancy talk. And um, it, I mean, it was just like, be real, um, you know, accept the things you cannot change. I mean, some of the things cliche almost that we've heard again and again, uh, but but that's who they are. That's who they want to be presented as is real people, um, real leaders, and they're asking the community to join them. The other one was the Honest Company. Um, so their thing, their value really is to work with other partners who share their values. So they are all about giving back, working for nonprofits. They did a lot of work during COVID-19, giving diapers and food and all of that back to the community. So really they want to be that honest company that's transparent, that uses, you know, um, environmentally friendly products and making sure that they're constantly giving back to the community. And I would just love to stop here and just see if anyone else has an example of a company who they can think of that has really great values that they, they live and promote. Does anyone have anything that comes to mind? And feel free to just come off mute too, if you'd like. You know, Diana is just coming back in, but I think it's interesting to note that sometimes companies have values listed. They may not have thought of it that way. Um, actually, I'm going to use Diana as an example. Pentagon MMA does kind of within their About Us and, in, and they promote classes actually talk about how they are dedicated to the benefits martial arts brings to, to our lives, like discipline, mm -hmm. um, confidence, things like that. So there's a value statement living within a lot of your marketing materials, Diana, that I'm using as an example yes, here. Um, so you might have a value statement that you don't know it's of. It's funny yet. that you mentioned that because we are updating a lot of this, um, our operations manual and the first part of our operations manual yeah. is our mission and values. Yay. So that's something I've been working on for the last three weeks. Um, so we've got the content. I'm just trying to make it look pretty so we can post it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's actually um, something we've been working on pretty hard. Great job, Diana. Hi, Diana. I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> Good to see you. How are you? Sorry. Good. Turn my video on real quick. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Like just here on your homepage, um, like the very first, like after you go through all the class options, you've got this um, discipline and confidence next to these pictures yeah. of children with their trophy. And it says martial arts classes benefit growing children far beyond the dojo and in many real world scenarios. Like I think that could easily be restructured into a value mm -hmm. statement of we value more than just teaching you martial arts. This is about discipline and confidence and teaching children to grow up to be, you know, yeah, you really easily rework that. Yeah. yeah. Love that. I'd also just like to add that I think that value statements I've seen change uh, drastically over the past two years to include things like Black Lives Matter or Pride mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any number of different uh, things. And as, as a gay man, I, when I see a business that's celebrating pride or has a, I feel invited in. Yep. I feel like I want to go there because I like those people. I know that they stand up for everybody. And, you know, there's also the great, um, we've had it in our window before, Amanda, uh, the, um, what does the sign say? It's the neighbors. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. it had three colors, and it said, uh, 
it in three different languages it was like yep. whoever you are we're happy you're our neighbor something like that mm -hmm. these are just like small little inclusionary um things that while small they they are very impactful i believe um mm -hmm. and and really just say who you are as yep. a person like neighbors are neighbors no matter what language you speak so just just a few other small things that I think could really you know as as a person walking down the street if I see those kind of signs in your window I'm going to go hey I want to go in there I right. like those people and as a consumer like I was just in New York City and UGG did this huge pop-up for Pride Month and it was awesome like rainbow everywhere even their pro all their products were rainbow and I wanted to support them because I'm like good for them for being so proud and loud about pride month, you know? <laughs> and so I think as it, again, it's attracting your people. Like I want to support those that are, that are transparent about what they believe in that support the same values that I do. And so I think it works both ways. Um, yeah. I like that example, Stephen. Thank you. No problem. So again, your values tell people who you are, but your actions show people who you are. So, you know, Amanda, you kind of alluded to this. It's one thing to say, oh, we have values. Yeah, they're on our website and link to them every now and then, or to just print it on a piece of paper and thumbtack it to a wall. But when <clears throat> you really need to ask yourself, am I living these values? Like if you're looking to, to work with someone new, are you, do they share your values? Do you believe in their product? Do you believe in their mission or are, you know, are your motives, um, you know, to make more money or get another client? Like that doesn't always work out well. It really has to be a, a good match. Um, and you want those customers too, who are going to support you and, and tell their friends about you, but you want those people that also believe in the values that you share. So I would just, you know, ask yourself, think about those values when you, when you're doing business with your customers, when you're talking to your staff members, um, when you're doing anything day to day, like is, are your values top in mind and are you living their truths? So what will your value, who will your values attract? Hopefully new customers. By marketing your values, by living your values, by working with values in mind, you are going to attract your people. And that's who you want. New customers, the right staff. You want staff that believe in what you believe in, that can share in those values and that can live those values with you. Volunteers, you want volunteers who can spread your message, who know what, how to say it, what to say. You don't want to have to give them talking points and hope that they, you know, remember them and say them correctly. You want them to, to believe it, to know it. Donors, again, finding the donors that believe in your mission. If they believe in your mission, they're going to give more money. They're going to give more money more often. And they're going to tell their friends who also believe in these values to, to support you. And then partners, finding those partners that share your values that you can collaborate with, that you can support them and they'll support you. So if your employees aren't happy, your customers probably won't be either. This again is about the alignment of finding your people who you, who work for you, with you, that can share your values. I know that um, when Stephen first approached me, the business owners were saying, we're, we're having a hard time finding staff. We're finding a hard time finding people who fit our culture. So again, making those, those values public, making them known. I mean, even just someone on social media who sees a post that's about your value of inclusivity might tell their friend who's looking for a job that, hey, CPRO is all about inclusivity. You should apply there. Like it's a trickle down effect. So be proud of your values, talk about them, market them, and you're going to bring in the right people to work with you and to help then grow your business. I would like to say on the like topic of hiring, um, there's a lot of people saying that there's, you know, a labor shortage or there's a worker shortage, but it's really that there's a lot of things that have changed over the last year for 
everyone, they're reassessing their values, how much they value that paycheck versus the time they spend at home with their kids or whether or not, you know, it's worth it. If they worked for an employer that they really felt did not have their best interests at heart, especially during a pandemic, they were still making them come into work, not quite providing the PPE, not being understanding of a lack of childcare. They're going to be wary to be in that situation a second time um, because they may not have seen the true colors of their previous employer. And so they're really going to be looking at those values and really wondering what the company culture mm -hmm. is like. And I know a lot of people are looking for jobs and being able to share those values and put that first of what it's going to be like if you're here, you're a part of our family or however you phrase that can help you break through the noise too, because there are a lot of people looking for employees. And so when you're job hunting and there's 10,000 jobs in your area, you're going to want something to break through the noise. And I think values are going to be the number one thing right now as people are deciding to go back to work Absolutely. or not. And the other just, you know, one point to make is you're not going to be for everyone and that's okay. You know, you don't want the people that aren't going to share your value or maybe they believe in three, but not the fourth, like move on, find the ones that, that are all in that believe in all of your values um, and can get behind you. All right. So you have your values. Uh, Diana's working on hers. Now, what do you do with them? So you need to share them. You need to tell people about them. Um, this can be on social media. You know, it'd be great to have, maybe the CEO does a quick video of, you know, this is what we stand for. Kind of like a, you know, we're coming out behind the logo and we're, we're standing here. We're telling you what our values are and we're inviting you to join us. We're inviting you to be a part of our mission, our values um, and our culture. Maybe it's the person behind the counter. Uh, maybe it's everybody. Maybe each staff does this quick little, you know, everyone says one value and you turn it into a, to a cool video that you can then promote on social media. Um, a lot of people, again, they've created these values, but they haven't shared them. So share them in your email. Um, if you have an email list, share it out. Let people know, hey, did you know that these are our four values? This is what we stand for. This is why we do what we do. Uh, we hope you'll join us, you know, reply to us if you agree or reply to us if you don't agree, but letting people know what your values are. Um, so email, video, you can turn them into posts. I mean, if you have four or five values, there's four or five posts, break it down um, and then give an example of how you're living that. I think it's really important to show how you are living your values. Um, again, like it's finding your authentic voice. So what makes your brand different? What makes your values different than someone else's? Maybe they're the same values, but how you project them, how you implement them is going to be different because you're not the same person. So think about finding that authentic voice and then keeping that voice consistent. Also find your cheerleader. Again, this might be a donor, this might be a volunteer, this might just be a staff member, but someone who believes just as much as you do in your business, in your brand, and getting them to help go out there and share your message, share your values. Hey, did you know this place? They have the best coffee, but they also believe in inclusivity and diversity, and you should go support them. Like you want the cheerleader to bring more people in, tell them about your brand. Again, people aren't just interested in your product anymore. I mean, there's a ton of places people can get shoes, but they're going to go find the shoes from the owner who believes the same things that they do. Stand by your values, no matter what, don't waver. Again, you're not going to be for everyone and that's okay. And then owning and acknowledging when you fall short. So I, you know, this is not about Google reviews and, um, you know, bad press, but owning when you may have made a mistake, you know, if, if you had an interaction with the customer or perhaps there was something that maybe didn't meet with your values and it became public owning that and, and letting the public know that you recognize that didn't align with our, with our values. We take full responsibility. We're not going to let that happen again. Um, you know, I think it's, it's worse to ignore it or pretend it didn't happen. So if at any point there is, an, there is a situation that maybe someone is questioning or pushing back on whether you're living your values, 
own that, acknowledge that, um, and then make it public so that people know that you're aware and you're willing to make a change. And then supporting others who share your values. Um, even if they're a competitor, that's okay. That just means that you guys, we share the same values. We support you. They most likely will support you back. Um, you know, whether it's, maybe it's on LinkedIn and you're just making a comment on their post, like, yeah, good for you. We believe the same things. Um, it's okay to support your competitors. There's enough space for everybody. And then there's also an opportunity to partner with other companies who share your values. It's just another um, avenue to, to find new partnerships, to find new collaborations. And by sh being public with your values, um, you're opening yourself up, which is good because someone might say, oh, I didn't know you guys believed that. We believe that too. How can we partner? What can we do together? And that is it for me. I would love to hear from anyone here, just if you've run into any, um, you know, if you've presented on your values or marketed your values and got pushback or got applause, just any experiences that you may have had, you know, good or bad with marketing your values and or any questions you might have about how to create values or how to market them. Does anyone have anything? Or any more examples of, of companies you've seen that, that have done really well in, in showcasing their values? And I'll stop sharing. So I'm, I'm gonna call out another business we have here. Actually, um, Wireless RXX, James Sampson joined us. Um, I would say that they actually do not have what is considered like traditional value statement, but they're another one where work into their about us and like bios and things, you guys actually do seem to kind of have a value um, statement, particularly in the um, about wireless RXX, because we believe you have the right to repair your devices without breaking the bank. Like that's, that's a value, like that's a statement absolutely that you could really capitalize on and i noticed something that i'm so curious about and i'm going to be googling um in the bio for james you say you're a proud member of the right to repair movement mm. i would love to have seen you expand on that because i just did a quick google while we were talking because i got down a rabbit hole and it looks interesting that there's a lot happening in the electronics industry about how we consume electronics about how we constantly replace electronics and there's a lot there that you could absolutely capitalize on for mm -hmm. a value statement. I would definitely encourage you to just build on what you already have. You've got the great foundations of value statement there. Yeah, and if anyone isn't sure if they have value statements or if you wanna share like your mission or like your website, like we're happy to look at it quickly and, and um, come up with some, some ideas on slogans or, or directions for you to to go in order to, to start building that list of values. I just wanna, I just wanna say thank you. I'm not James, I'm Roy, I work for him. And uh, thank you for uh, put us like, for example, in, in the right to repair movement. And we basically support every aspect of that movement. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you for sharing as well. Thanks, Roy. I think another thing that um, even we run into is in that marketing your value statement, I think it's easy to say, okay, well, I need to share that I've, I've got this value statement, but it's really beyond that. And I think one of the best places is in those partnerships. Mm -hmm. If you are partnering up with someone or you just come across someone that shares your values, promote them because you, you know, those are your values, you know, and you want to promote those. And by promoting another company, it's not as self-serving. People are going to see that you are genuine. It feels more genuine by promoting another company, not just yourself um, when it comes to those values. And I think that, you know, we often, I know I have a hard time often coming up with content and knowing I want to stay front of mind for people and I want to get our values out there. How do I do that without being like, these are our values again and again and again. And I think, 
having those partners where you can share what they're sharing and they share what you're sharing, it helps you kind of reach each other's audiences mm -hmm. um, and really reinforces those values. But then also when it comes to the behind the scenes, talking about a company culture, you know, share stuff from your employees, have your employees share stuff that you then share um, social media wise, you know, making sure that it's, it's real for people. If I'm, if I'm looking at a job posting you have, I'm going to go to your Facebook. I'm going to go to your Instagram. I'm going to go to LinkedIn, look for those employees that have marked that and see if people are actually happy, mm -hmm. see if people are really, you know, excited about your values. Um, and so I think the more you can share behind the scenes, like you may be promoting shoes, but maybe it was an employee's birthday. And if they don't mind, share that picture that you did celebrate your birthday with their employees, you know, may not have anything to do with shoes, but it does have to do with your company. Mm -hmm. so I would definitely encourage you to get all the behind the scenes content you can from your employees and your partners. Absolutely. And I, yeah, I think one thing, Amanda, just to know, businesses and brands often have a hard time talking about themselves um, for whatever reason. And, you know, they feel like they're tooting their own horn or they don't know how to without sounding, you know, whatever. So it is, it is so important to have your employees finding those cheerleaders, getting those partners to sing your praises and, and talk all about you and you return the favor. Um, and also I love what you're saying about behind the scenes, it's showing your culture, like, are your employees truly happy? You can tell me that you have these values, but when I go look at your, your Facebook posts or your LinkedIn, like, are your, are your employees sharing in this, you know, happiness mm -hmm. and are they, do they have job satisfaction? Are they having fun? Is there birthday cakes? Like that all goes to your values and to the culture of your organization. So yeah, share it, show people, they want to see that. Hi, Nicole. Hi, <laughs> thank you for, for hosting. I guess I have I haven't met most of you, but um, I am interested in the discussion for kind of two prongs. I run a small financial planning practice. And so I feel like I can take a lot of this for myself, but I also work with a lot of businesses. So I think it's, it's really interesting to kind of hear the conversation. And I think one thing that I am constantly, I guess, balancing is the, the value of being specific in terms of who, you know, I serve and who, who I work with, but also to your point, um, Heather, about not everyone is for you and that's okay. But I think the desire that you, I feel like I could help everyone or like I could work with everyone and help them a little bit at least. And so I think that's a struggle, not like, oh, I'm so, I'm so wonderful. I can help everyone, but just there is something I'm sure I could, you know, provide that mm -hmm. could be helpful. And so I think it's a struggle that I want to be clear though, who really are those, those markets. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, we kind of already talked on that, but I don't know if you have any other thoughts in terms of how being specific actually sometimes like opens up um, the conversation a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I have the same challenges. It's like, well, I want to help everyone and why couldn't we work with them? I, I know we could do good things for them, but then you might find a, a individual or business and it's not a good match. And so it's like, do you walk away? Do you, do you just suck it up and, and do it anyways? You know, and I, and I've found for me when I do it anyways, knowing it's not a good fit, it doesn't ever turn out right. Um, so I think it's just, yeah, I think it's making that list of who do I want to work with? Who's my ideal client? Who's my ideal business to partner with? And then when you meet someone new, do they fit that criteria? And if they don't, then I, you know, you've got to walk away um, or find someone that you think would be a good partner for them. Like, you know, I don't know that we can help you, but I know someone who can, and that's, you're still then providing value. You're still helping them in a, in a different sense. Um, but it is hard because we do want to help people and we don't want to turn people away. And, you know, it, it makes me think of like that niching down too. like, well, I don't want to limit myself to who I can and cannot work with. Um, so, but I think if you, if you have that base, you have that foundation of, of these are our values. This is our mission. This is who we want to work with. And if it isn't a great fit, here's some some alternatives. Here's some partners that I'll introduce you to, and maybe it's a good fit for them. And then everybody wins. Thank you. I think too, as you promote your values, you'll 
see fewer people come to you that don't fit them. I mean, because most people are going to Google you and look up and see what you're all about. And they're going to try to find the right fit. And the more you can put out there about yourself, like up front, the more of the right ideal clients you'll attract. And those that aren't ideal, they'll probably recognize that and they'll move on on their own. So you don't constantly feel like you're in that position of having to turn someone away. Yeah. But also, you know, to Heather's point earlier, like, you also don't want to not do great work because that does reflect on your company. You don't want to have clients out there that aren't happy with the work you provided and the work was great. It just wasn't the right fit for them. And that can really color kind of how they then talk about your company to others. And it's always better to have that quality client than just quantity that may not be the right quality you want to put out there. Mm-hmm. We put a very bold statement out on our website and on our job applications. And we took a pause, like, are we ready to do this? Because we're going to turn some people away. And we were like, we're okay with that. Like if they don't believe in this statement, then they're not a good fit for us anyways. So it does also, I mean, it doesn't waste your time or the other person's time and not that their values are any less important than yours. It's just that if they don't match, you know, let's save both of us the trouble and keep them moving. So, um, it, 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 it can feel scary, but I do think it's the right move. And yes, thank you for sharing that sticker, Stephen. I love when I see houses with the yard signs of, uh, the neighborhood sticker. Yeah. Just, just, uh, you know, the, the wider tent you cast, the more people come into it. Right. Yeah. Hey, Heather, I have a question. Um, so we have a list of value statements, right? And then mm-hmm. we also have a mission statement, essentially a core focus, right? Mm-hmm. What, how much of an overlap should there be between the statement, like one statement and the list of values? Is it, is the core focus, should the mission statement be essentially like a summary of the list of values or are we just, is that just redundant or? I mean, mission and values are very different. So, you know, your, usually your mission statement leads, right? So that's why, why you're doing what you're doing and what you hope to accomplish. And then your values are how you're going to accomplish that in a sense. So there might be some overlap, but like when we're reading, writing for companies, mission and value statements, like we try not to use the same words. Okay. Um, So there is a difference. And I, you know, I would just, your mission is your, your number one statement. Yeah. Yep. And then under that, it's like, how are you going to accomplish this mission in a, you know, how will you work? How will you interact? How will you support the community or your staff or um, so there might be overlap in the sentiment, but they are very much different phrases and words and, and meanings, if you will. Okay. I, to that point, I think it's a very good question because sometimes even in nonprofit world, you have so many different statements you're making that they winds up all being the same because you only have this one thing in mind. But I did just pull up Arlington Strategies, um, and I like the the difference between the mission and the vision. Do you want to pull that up and share with everyone, yeah, Heather? Or? Sure. And actually, we just redid them. Um, we did a all day offsite with our team, um, and we you know we had the whiteboard and we said, okay, what do we believe in? Like, give us words. Um, and I'm just looking for. I have it right now. I can pull it up if you, you want. Do. To. Yeah. Are you sharing? Oh, yeah. there you are. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we provide smart, creative, goal-oriented thinking and solutions to help small businesses and nonprofits thrive. Um, and I, you know, I even think that it's it's still a work in progress. Like we're always kind of reiterating and, and reevaluating like, okay, you know, maybe every six months we're like, is this still our mission? Is this still what we're here to do? And sometimes we're like, well, yes, but we've also done all of this. So do we change this word? Like it can be an evolution. Um, and actually I think we have since 
uh, updated some of these. So like collaboration, creativity, excellence, service, and integrity. Um, I think we added community into ours and I, I don't know that it's updated yet, but um, again, those values are supporting our mission, right? So like knowing what your mission is, having that strong foundation and then deciding how will you support those? How will you get there? And what is important that you have implemented in order to get to your mission? Um, you know, we want organizations to thrive um, and we're going to do that with excellence, with creativity, with service. But if we can't do that with integrity too, then we're not going to do it, right? So you got to make sure that they all can come together and accomplish that mission that you've put in place or that goal for whichever organization you're supporting. And this is a great example of what we do and then how we do what we do, mm -hmm. I think is, is a great way to put it. Your mission statement is like exactly what you do, like providing mixed martial arts classes, you know, and then how you do it. You do it through collaborating with all the best instructor, instructors. You do it through, you know, all kinds of different ways you do that. Um, I think it's, it's a good example. Yeah, I'm just pulling up um, Pentagon MMA. You don't have it on your website yet, Diana. Sorry, muted. Um, no, actually we okay. have updated that. And I I was just logging in right now because I can't remember what's even up there. Um, yeah, the place I was looking was on your homepage where you've got the six fun and confident, talking about your kids' martial arts program. That was something that really felt like it stood out to me as talking about your values and your core mission and yeah what you believe and why you do what you do mm -hmm. it's a cute picture <laughs> but I would even be a little bit more direct and bold and say like <clears throat> our values are discipline mm -hmm. confidence you know yeah. like list them out so people know that you're you're really saying that this is what we believe in right this, yeah this is kind of a this is automated I think the website the program takes snippets of uh, different parts of the website and just oh. throws them up, pops them up. But um, but it's something we're working on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> it's such a cute picture. I like this. We're here to help you achieve your goals. Um, I think is another great thing to work in. I think you've got a lot of really great bits and pieces everywhere throughout the website that did easily be worked into a, a very concise statement mm -hmm. you know what we actually posted a few years ago we posted like rules right um like house rules mm. poster um it's sitting right at the front on the wall and it kind of essentially incorporates our values like um there's a lot of like we don't give up there's a lot of we welcome everybody regardless of who they are where they are what they come from um it's a, we're a safe space essentially um kind of paraphrasing but um it's up there it's just listed differently I guess <laughs> I love that though I love house rules yeah that's cool it definitely worked on Nicole because she said she had rolled her yeah, son oh so hey funny. Nicole that's so cool thank you <laughs> yeah no we, we had a couple of kids in his class already enrolled there and so we've been meaning to do it so it's very very good timing that we were on the call today <laughs> oh, wonderful. wonderful let me know if you have any feedback questions <laughs> yeah that's great well, she knows your your uh, morals and your mission now. So. <laughs> I'm even happier with our decision. Yeah, exactly. and, and she's yeah. going to tell her friends. And <laughs> so this is case in point. Um, yeah. This is this is it's it's not only a great business, but then when you add to it the moral like content and values, yeah, it's a slam dunk. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what puts you over the decision making point of somebody else. You know. Mm -hmm. I did find it extremely interesting. Like I knew that value statements and core beliefs and whatnot were becoming more and more important. But that very first slide where you said 87% of people, so they purchase a product based on a brand's values. Like, and that was in 2017. Right. Think of what that is right. now as prevalent as, you know, we keep hearing about, well, this company is now being boycotted or this company supported yeah. this thing or refused to condemn this thing. And it becomes a whole 
thing. I I imagine that's like 99% of people now, that there's very few people out there who do not, even if they don't go out searching for someone's values, if they do hear about something that doesn't align with their values, they're very quick to drop a company because yep. they're hard-earned money. They don't want going towards something if it can go toward, you know, something that aligns with their beliefs um, right. better. So I, I was surprised at that. I did not think it would have been 87% of people four years ago. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that number is now. Well, and I mean, it's, they can find another place. It's not like there's only one shoe store, one coffee shop, you know? So that's, yeah. I mean, to your point, values are so, so important and to share them is even more important because I think that is how people are purchasing and choosing. And, you know, I read an article about a restaurant that wasn't treating their employees right. And I haven't been in there since, and I love their food, but I can find another place. Like, so I, I do, I think it, it is that value proposition is to share your values and, um, you know, make them very public. I also just want to say to CPRO, like your website too is great that, you know, your mission is top and center, your values underneath, and then your work, and they all encompass each other, right? I mean, they all come together and support one another. So having that on your website is and this is under the about section in case anyone wants to know, like, where do you put this? Um, it's great. And it also just, it tells who you are. It tells why you do it. And, you know, immediately someone can say yes or no to this, to you as a company. So yours looks great as well. I will say that I, to, uh, to another, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier about like signage and things like that, that help you. I don't know if I, and I'm probably lying when I say this. I don't know that I've sought out a business because of their support of this or that or their values. I don't know if I've sought something out, but I definitely know where I don't want to shop. I definitely know yeah. who has done bad things and not apologize for them and not wreck all the things that you spoke to earlier, right. not owned their mistakes or doubled down on them. I definitely know where I don't want to put my dollars. And that's mm -hmm. like Amanda said, that has grown tenfold in the past, you know, three, four years. It's, it's amazing. Um, so I'd love to know what that number is now too. Like you said, yes. Amanda, it's and I think gotta to be your point. I don't think I ever was like, I really like these shoes. Let me go see if their values align with mine, right. but it, it can be subconscious too. Because as you align with the values of other people, they're more likely to gravitate toward you. They're, if they see your stuff on Facebook or Instagram and they're like, oh, that's really cute. Sure, I'm going to scroll right past the pair of shoes. Because yep. I'm not always looking for shoes. But if I see something like two or three times that's like about your values and I'm like, this looks like a really cool company. Or, you know, I have come across people that are like, you know what, I gave up. I only shop women-owned now. I can't, you know, or... You know, I give up. I only shop black owned businesses now. Like I do everything I can to make sure I support these people because they've seen like to your point, Stephen, you know, the bad things that have happened where, you know, minority owned businesses aren't getting into the competitive market. So they're trying to shift and help give them that edge. So, you know, it may not be that you specifically Google someone's values before you shop with them, but the more you see, the more you hear, the more you kind of get hit with it, the more it affects you even subliminally or subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So, so Target, Target was giving money to uh, anti-LGBTQIA uh, organizations. This was years ago. Um, and they are the best example I can think of of somebody who owned their mistake, acknowledged really? it, and then filtered their money totally into, you know, so, and there are other businesses that I won't name that have belly flopped on these kind of things. Right. But, but, Another example I can think of, I, I want to hit on the swammy businesses, Amanda, um, but also it's it's the model of like Tom's. Do you remember Tom's, the shoes? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the whole thing with Tom's was you buy a pair, a pair is donated. Yeah. Well, I didn't need a pair of Tom's, <laughs> but I saw that and was like, that's really cool. They're doing that. I'm going to buy a pair of Tom's. Mm -hmm. And now they're my pool shoes, you know? It's it's like this is disposable income that if I have to give and see oh god I really that hits me in my soft spot here that's yep. going to do somebody else good I'm going to do it yeah and and it's the same thing so 
we uh, we talk a lot about uh, SWAM certified businesses. Um, so that's uh, small minority. Um, and, oh God, I'm I'm forgetting. Small women, women and minority owned. Yeah. Thank you. SWAM. It's because I con I mixed up the letters. Um, if I know that a business is a SWAM certified business, I'm going to go like spend my dollars there. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that a lot of SWAM businesses do not understand because it's a new, relatively new uh, an acronym um, that you have to actually fill out the certification through the county. Um, I think that Amanda, maybe that's like a future um, connect and collaborate, like how to yeah. get SWAM certified if you're a SWAMI business. Um, cause I, I think, and it's an easy thing to do. It's just following through the steps to do it. It was originally um, just for getting like state and local government contracts. Like it was a database just for, you know, contractors and, and loan suppliers and things like that. But now people are for the private sector and just for their customers being like, we are SWAM certified and the public is starting to know what that is, but it's outside of that contracting database for government. Mm -hmm. So I think it's absolutely important to bring that up and mention that, that even if you don't have the time to really build out your values, at least kind of putting those things out there about yourself, you know, even if it is just worked into your about us and it's not quite a formal value statement yet to make sure you're promoting that, promote what it is that sets you apart, you know, that value proposition and that value. Well, and Steve, I really you... think that, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you, you made a good point. I think we're to the point too, where it's not about a need. It's about support. Like if I, I'll walk by a window and I'll see a tote bag, I don't need it, but then I'll notice they're supporting black lives matter. They're a black owned company, like whatever it might be. And I'm like, I'm going to go support them. So like, it goes beyond just, you know, supply and demand and you have to, you know, something you need, it's to people really want to support other people. So let them, let them know why they should support you. And I, I will say just to that point really quickly that, you know, there's not much people feel like they need right now. No. They're saving. We've been through quite the ordeal <laughs> that people are really trying to save that disposable income. They don't know if something else is coming down the line. You know, they don't care though. If we're going into a recession, if the housing market's going to burst again, like there's, a lot of, I think, economic fear, mm -hmm. um, just in the last, you know, even just 10 years of everything that's happened from one recession to a pandemic, from everything in between, that I don't need that tote bag. But okay. the value proposition or the value statement of why I should shop with you, that could be the thing that makes the difference between me making that purchase. Because I might have disposable income that I'm saving unless I absolutely need something. But then maybe I don't need it, but I'm going to get it because I need to support the businesses that I want to support. And yeah. I think that can be a make, make the difference in a purchase. Mm -hmm. I, I want to like talk to BizLaunch a little more and maybe I think it, it could be just a state level issue, but about like a SWAM certified sticker or something to put in your window that explains what SWAM is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because if that could become, I mean, that's, that's the trend with everything, right? Is the, you know, the, all those commercials for the, a well health certified business, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but but the SWAM thing, I, I think if we could make it a big enough thing where people would recognize the sticker and direct their business there, that could be very helpful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Put it on the list. Love I that. am putting it on the list right now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying for myself, put it on my own list. <laughs> Well, Heather, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, we have five minutes left. I don't want to uh, monopolize anyone's day or morning. It's, it's too early in the week. Um, but if anybody has any other questions or comments, that feel free to just freeform chat for the next few minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen, Amanda, Kim. It was great to see you all. And um, it was a fun conversation. So thank you all for joining. Thank you. And if you think of anything later, feel free to shoot us at emails. Uh, feel free to, we will be posting the recording of this to refer back to um, on YouTube, hopefully in a few days. It won't take me too long to get it up. Um, but yeah, feel free to shoot us an email anytime you have questions or want to refer back to something or need a connection or just want a second set of eyes and be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking is our value statement. What do you think? Does this resonate? We are happy to help be a little bit of that focus group for you. Absolutely. Thank you guys. This is great. Very productive. <laughs>
Good. Thanks, Diana. Nice to see you and meet you all. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you Nicole. Nice to meet you, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, guys.